Hello everybody, I'm Rene Ramos, director of the Lynn and Lewis Wolfson II Florida Moving Image Archives, and this is Rewind, the show that looks back on Florida's past with historic film and video. It's time for another trip back into the past, so sit back, relax, and enjoy another episode of Rewind. All those words, love, honor, respect, and obey till death do you part. <laughs> death do you part ends at 29, 30 these days. I mean... Have you said that to your mother and father? No. <laughs> well, you are now. Today, a look at the children of broken marriages. This is Montage. Hello, I'm Joe Averill. In this special edition of Montage, we'll focus on a problem that hits close to many of our homes and hearts. The problems of children whose parents are seeking divorce. Some of the legal battles get settled in court, at least temporarily. But even after parents settle on who gets the children for Christmas, the emotional scars remain, sometimes forever. Today we have two reports. The first, on a new trend in resolving divorce and separation issues before they get to court, followed by a look at how children from broken homes are being helped in their schools to deal with feelings about a situation becoming all too commonplace. Nancy Ross has this report first on divorce mediation, what it is and whom it affects. When is mommy coming back? Kramer versus Kramer was the movie that shattered many ideals about perfect marriage and civilized divorce. The popularity of this Hollywood custody battle wasn't an accident because the fight for Billy Kramer is a scene all too real for too many families. Well, I've learned that I love my little boy and uh, that I'm capable of taking care of him. What do you mean? I want my son. You can't have him. America has many Billy Kramers, children caught between mothers and fathers who don't love each other anymore. All too often, children are the last to know about divorce in the family and are left out of legal proceedings that reshape the rest of their lives. A process called divorce mediation is working to turn that trend around. I like to like spend a weekend with my dad like like every other weekend and then I like stay at my mom for a weekend like I like to take turns because uh -huh. I like being with both my mom and my dad. Val and Eric have been legally divorced for a year. When visitation conflicts rose over 12-year-old EJ, lawyers advised them to seek outside mediation. Together with EJ, they now make scheduled visits to Eileen Hubert or Eileen Vinicor of Broward County's Family Conciliation Unit. Mediation has as its goal a uh, amicable settlement. Uh, it's a very short-term process where two opposing parties meet together to compromise and negotiate with one another the terms of their divorce and how these two parents who are emotionally um, out to get each other in, in many cases are going to work with each other constructively for the sake of their children. The first step in breaking up is the attorney's office. The more complicated the issues, the longer a couple is forced to deal with their lawyers. According to family law expert James Fox Miller, this drains the pocketbook as well as the heart. And if there's a custody problem, I basically want to say, sign your check and I'll fill in the numbers because there's not, there's not enough money in the world for a true custody fight. I will never take a case and contest the custody if I don't think that I have a chance if I don't think it's in the best interest of the children for my client to win. I'm very serious about it and one of the one of the tests is when I ask for that blank check because it's very easy to say ask for custody but uh, uh, the acid test is write the check mister. Though mediation shouldn't be used in place of a lawyer it can save couples excessive time and money in a fragile sometimes explosive situation. We often think in terms of finances and how much money we can save and by better communicating with one another, they can work more constructively with their attorneys. Mm. Okay. And so that's going to reduce the legal fees. More importantly, mediation includes children as active participants in their future rather than weapons between two emotional forces. This is a right often overlooked in traditional divorce proceedings. You have wife speaking to her attorney and her attorney speaking to his attorney, his attorney speaking to husband. About it's like children. that old-fashioned game of telephone or gossip. The child then is, um, is left out because the parents, the, the fight continues. It keeps going around and around, and the child is then in the middle. 
and he's hurt. Any child in the middle of a conflict is going to be hurt. Complete confidentiality is assured in mediation. Records are not passed on to attorneys or courts. This privacy is a double-edged sword. Though parents are more open to expressing their feelings in mediation, judges like Linda Vitale, who pass final divorce orders, are in the dark as to why and how settlements are reached. Mediation is not really getting their message through or what work they've done or what information they've found out back to the judges. I don't necessarily agree with mediation and I'm not so sure the attorney can't always provide it. They may not always provide it. I think they do an outstanding job in most cases. It's not surprising that attorneys for the most part also agree that attorneys are more effective. If you can get these people to mediation and uh, they can sit around and talk about it, a lot of good can be done. But then there is a tendency to get involved in the financial aspects of the settlement. And I think they are, I've never met a qualified mediator in that area. Though mediation may not be the method of choice in every type of child-related divorce, it does have some satisfied parent and child customers. We just can't seem to agree on a lot of things. But through uh, the mediation program, with a counselor sitting here, it kind of helps. It's a good referee. And if you had one wish, what would that be for your family? My mom and dad to be happy. Does that necessarily mean together? No. What they want, be happy. In all-out divorce war, a wife and husband may forget that after divorce is final, they will always be mom and dad. If mediation serves only to remind them that their child's life is in the balance, it's probably worth a try. But the shockwaves of divorce are felt long after the case leaves the courtroom. Children manifest their hurt every day in places like this daycare center and in schools where, as Diana gonzalez Ruthie reports, efforts are being made to listen and to help. When families break up, children experience so many emotions. Resentment, sorrow, fear. Unfortunately, kids can't leave their feelings behind at home. They bring them to school every day. We've talked about all of these feelings. How do you handle those feelings? And let's start with confusion and scared. When my mom and dad, were, they weren't separated yet, but they were going to get separated. And when, when they did, I, don't, I didn't really feel in the middle. But sometimes when my mom and they'd get in a fight and he'd call and everything, mm -hmm. I felt like I was in the middle of it, that I didn't know where to go. Divorce or separation does more than break up a marriage. It splits up a family. Everyone feels the effects, and the kids are faced with a new situation and feelings they don't know how to deal with. Most parents in this generation have very little experience in coping with divorce themselves. You know, the divorce boom has left many people with no precedent for coping adequately and healthily with a divorce. If they can't show their children how to cope, the children are left completely at sea as to what they do. So Reva Weissman brought her expertise and advice to the fifth graders at Palm Springs North Elementary School. I think you can be as direct with your parents as you know how to be and say, what's going on? Why is dad gone? And sometimes you even have to say, are you separating? Are you getting a divorce? Because you need to know. You feel much better, even if it's bad news, if you know. That is the one thing most children complain about, not being told the truth by their parents, which only adds to their confusion and feelings of resentment. I think that if they would have come out and explained it openly, that I could have been able to cope with it better. When you just see your dad leaving, or saying, well, we're getting a divorce, so forth, and they don't give no reason, you feel like, gosh, I must really be an important part of them because they didn't even bother telling me. David Capiro, a senior at Hialeah High School, has experienced more than his share of the painful effects of divorce. His parents divorced once when he was nine, remarried each other, and divorced again a little over a year ago. David said it was harder to accept the second time. He took out his anger on his father. At first, because he was the one that left the house, I just couldn't even look at the man. I was just frustrated with him. And for several months, I went on that I would just not talk to man, I could not look at the man. The peer group counseling program at school has helped David cope with his situation. 
Dr. James Menace, the counselor at Hialeah High, runs 20 group sessions a week for 300 students. Divorce is not the only subject discussed, but along with sex and drugs, it's one of the most common problems the kids talk about. A family breakup can be devastating for a teenager simultaneously struggling with the pressures of adolescence. Well, there's certain steps that an adolescent has to go through, certain growth and maturation process that he has to go through, where he is dependent upon or she, on both parents to go through. And certainly with one of them not there, that causes some problems. Yet recent studies have concluded that children at the elementary school age have the most difficulty coping when their parents separate or divorce. Uh, you know, a one-parent family, uh, it's a difficult situation, you know, for you to understand and accept. In October, Brentwood Elementary counselor George Kearns decided to form a discussion group for students from one-parent homes. He started out with just four or five kids. Now the group sometimes has more than 30 students. They meet once a week to openly share their feelings with each other. You're from one-parent families. How do any of you feel about later on when you're older about you getting married? I think that if I have kids and get married, I wouldn't want, I would try to make sure that they get the best and I wouldn't want them to have, to have all the trouble that I had when I was, small, when I was young. And I would make sure that I have the right husband. Before getting married, before deciding to have kids, you should um, be like enough time being married to make sure you're not going to get divorced after having kids because it'll be a problem to your children. What these students are being taught is a basic skill they absolutely cannot do without, communication. It's what's missing in so many failing marriages today and what will hopefully make a difference in their future. Remember the one thing, when we're talking about our feelings, whatever answer you give is always correct because it's your feeling. Others may disagree with you, you know, and that's okay. Sometimes we disagree. Sometimes we agree on things, but it's our own personal feelings. So Coming up next, a child psychiatrist, a divorced mother, and three children communicate their feelings and experiences. Miami-Dade College has career paths in anything you want to be. What's your story? Be global. Be cutting edge. Be inventive. Be investigative. Be a hero. What do you want to be? Be the best. Be you. Be MDC. Even though divorce and separation seem to be common problems shared by 40% of all families, many going through a breakup think they're alone in what they're feeling. Well, obviously, divorce and separation are very sensitive topics, and it's not easy to talk about your personal problem in dealing with a family breakup. But it's only through communicating our feelings and experiences that we can learn to deal with them. Now, we were fortunate to find some people who were willing to share what they have been through. Michael and Tracy are brother and sister. Their parents have been separated for over a year. Michelle is 14. Her mother and father divorced when she was two. Ruth Thweet is recently divorced and the mother of a two-year-old girl. And Dr. Warren Schlanger deals with the effects of divorce through his work as chief of psychiatry at Variety Children's Hospital. Here are some excerpts from our conversation. Do you, do you feel different than other children who aren't from divorced families? Not really, because mm -hmm. most of us are, we ha most of us have the same problem. Mm -hmm. We can usually discuss it with each other because it's nothing different. Every, you know, everybody in my school practically, you know, we can all relate to everything that, you know, each one of us says because it's all the same. Everything, you know, it's either related or it is exactly the same. Do you agree with that? Well, for me it's different because there aren't a lot of kids in my school whose parents are divorced. Mm. But a lot of my friends live with both their parents. But I can still talk to them, you know. One, uh, one thing that um, I was real concerned about was, was, I guess, even when I was growing up, there were not that many kids that had, had come from broken homes or had divorced parents and so naturally I was thinking you know oh Melissa's not going to have her father there and 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 the thing about changing my name and and all of that was a was a concern what is the impact you see on children 
Uh, well, that depends on the age of the child. Um, in most situations, a divorce occurs when children are under age seven. Really? Yeah. Uh, because um, the divorce most frequently occurs during the time when the parents were in their 20s. Uh, so if you have a child under age five, let's say between age two and a half and five, it may have more of an impact than it would on a child who's over age five. Uh, this being the fact that children who are over age five are in school, as the three of you were discussing, you have other people to talk to. Mm -hmm. You have other adults to talk to, other children to talk to, and you kind of can separate yourself out from the what's happening within the family. Mm -hmm. Also, your methods for coping are a little bit more developed. But somewhere between the age of two and a half and five, the child is really stuck in the process. And uh, you'll often see a regression in their development. Can you kids see uh, who does better, your mother or your father, being divorced? It doesn't really fit. Neither one of them do better. Really? They both like my, like my mom really is around us more like when my dad says that like he's gonna come down he'll come down and see us sometimes he doesn't and I, most of the time I can count on my mom more. Yeah. The girls see any difference? Well I haven't seen my father since I was five but I think my mom's doing pretty good. Does that obviously that must upset you that you haven't seen your father or maybe, yeah. maybe he doesn't anymore maybe you've got used to it. Well uh, yeah I've gotten used to it by now. At first, when kids would talk about what they did with their fathers, you sort of wish that you could say the same thing, but yeah. now I've gotten used to it. You may have no contact with him at all. Well, he writes letters and sends gifts, but that's about it. And you guys have been divorced. Our parents, parents are separated. They're They've been separated. separated. They're not, they're not um, divorced. They're, there's a uh, a half of possibility that they'll be getting back together during the summer. Great. You hope that happens? Yeah. Because my mom and my dad have been discussing things and they've been talking it over and they think that it'll, it'll work. They, they said they'll try it one more time. Have you guys been a part of the discussion about that? About them getting back together? Well, kind of. See, like, say our mother would tell us this and our father would tell us part of that and it would kind of fit together here and there. And it, was, it, it wasn't brought up as a group discussion. We weren't all sitting around and we weren't all talking about it. Yeah. Say my mom would tell my brother, then my mom would tell me, then maybe my dad will tell both of us. Or yeah. Like, like yeah. you were talking about, like when your mother and father um, get separated, well, I used to do good in school, and now I, I haven't, haven't been doing that good because I haven't been... Like, I, w I always, when people, when we have share and tell and somebody will go up there and they'll talk about the father and then, you know, you, you don't always go up there and talk about that, about your father when you go with your father someplace or something. Do you really feel that <clears throat> you're not doing as well in school because your parents are separated? Well, most of the time, most of the time I've been coming home because I haven't been feeling good and stuff. And you kind of think that's mm -hmm. because they're having trouble between them. And my, um, the vice principal of the school knows that my mom and dad are, aren't living together and she tries to help me and stuff. Well, are you hearing anything unusual so far? Uh, no, I, I think what Michael was saying and the, the kinds of things he's experiencing are very much what I encounter um, and the kinds of things I would really expect. Uh, often, what the three of you were, were not really mentioning is sometimes the children really get caught up in the whole process of, uh, of the conflict between the parents right. and a lot of the conflict is worked out <clears throat> through the children. Right. And as a result, uh, uh, they find themselves having to take sides. Um, sometimes they'll even play one parent against the other and use the opportunity. But, uh, I see what he means by that. Sometimes yeah. like, you know, you take one side of the parent because one is mad at the other and he'll take the one that you think, you know, that you spend the most time with, you kind of take their side. Sure. That's, what it, that's like, the kind of thing that happens. When they, when they get separated, well, you think like some, some one, like you think that you're the one that made them get separated or something. Did you, did you guys all have had that feeling of being responsible? Of course, you couldn't. You were, what, two years two. old? 
I really didn't have that kind of feeling. I uh, felt it was between them two, not me. I wasn't the cause of it. Mm -hmm. So if I were, they would be taking it actually out on me. They wouldn't be the ones getting divorced. It would be they, me. Yeah. The, they kind of be disowning me. Right. When they like get into fights, they always put us in the middle of it and stuff. So what do you do when that happens? Well, most of the time, I, I just walk out of the house. You know, Michelle, you said you, you've really never known your father. Is, right. is, is that true? Yeah. Um, so uh, Joe was saying a moment ago that you probably couldn't feel guilty of having caused any problem because you were only two. Right. Uh, but did you ever wonder, was there anything wrong with you that your father left you? Yeah, sometimes. You wonder that if I hadn't been born, if they'd still be together, or if I had been born later, or something like that. Right. And do uh, you have a question why he hasn't been in, more in contact with you than he has? No. I just figured if he left, you know, he just didn't want to. And you just accept it at that level. Yeah. And that's it. Does he have another family or something now? Do yeah, you? he just remarried. So I don't know much about who he remarried or anything. He just wrote and said that he remarried. But one of the things that I think about and used to keep me up at nights and everything was, was you know, what, like what Michelle is talking about, not knowing her father, I wonder what kind of relationship my daughter Melissa will have with her father. And, you know, there's only so much of it that's even in my realm of control mm -hmm. that, you know, I would like for her to know him and through the years, because he's a good person and, and she yeah. should know her father. And she does know who he is now and he sees her um, and she's crazy about him. But I just wonder, you know, I, I kind of have this anxiety about over the years, what kind of relationship will be they'll be able to maintain and continue, especially since, you know, I'm I'm sure that he'll remarry and, and have a family. I would imagine have a family of yeah. his own again, and that's something that uh, has really, like I said, it's kept me up nights prior to really making the decision to have the divorce to begin with. Right. Because then you get into the if you remarry, you get into the jealousy of the new wife. Mm -hmm. You're spending too much time with your child, mm -hmm. none of time with their children. These are issues that inadvertently come up. Mm -hmm. uh, also, f speaking up for fathers a little bit, it's kind of a painful process for a father. They go and they visit their children uh, maybe once a week or maybe it's every other weekend and then all of a sudden they have to leave the child and they don't have any contact and that can be very painful for the father and as a result they sometimes protect themselves and begin to pull back mm -hmm. and actually end up visiting, visiting less. Uh, because they feel bad that they have to leave their children when they each after each visit. Some of the times when your friends come up to you and say, um, like, did did you go out with your dad last night, or did you did did your dad help you with your homework or something? And then you'll say, well, my dad doesn't live with you, and you know they always feel guilty that they asked you that question. They always say, I'm sorry, I asked you and stuff. Tracy, were you going to say something? Were you? Huh? You were going to say something while I go, I thought. Yeah, I'd like to know what happened to all those words, love, honor, respect, and obey till death do you part. <laughs> death do you part ends at 29, 30 these days. I mean... Have you said that to your mother and father? No. Well, you are now. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way of looking at it. Well, no, that's true. <laughs> and perhaps that uh, more children should ask their parents a question like that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think has happened to those words? I really don't know. I've never been married, so I can't really relate to it, but when they say those words, I figure, you know, at the time, they think they can honor, respect, and obey, and love, but after a year or two, it just, yeah. they get caught up in each other's problems. What advice would you give to someone watching now, who, parent or child, who is either planning divorce or in the midst of getting a divorce, and, and it's a very uncertain future, what would you say to them, Michelle? Well, for the people, if they're thinking about getting divorced, I would tell them not to stay together just because of the children. Because they, like, try to hide their fights. They think the children don't know, but children realize it. Like, if there's tension between the parents, they're going to realize it. And for the child, I'd say don't blame yourself, because it's not your fault. Miami-Dade College has career paths in anything you want to be. What's your story? Be global. Be cutting edge. Be inventive. Be investigative. 
Be a hero. What do you want to be? Be the best. Be you. Be MDC. Next week on Montage, making it big, losing it big, and trying to break even. Making it big is the story of three South Florida women whose dreams of fame and fortune on the pro tennis circuit have met with varying results. Losing it big is what's happening these days at Pan Am, the airline currently losing more than $1 million a day. And breaking even? Well, that's not doing too badly against inflation, according to my guest, investment advisor Howard Ruff. That's our montage for this week. I'm Joe Abril. That's about it for this edition of Rewind. Just time to remind you that Rewind features historical film and video from the Lynn and Lewis Wolfson II Florida Moving Image Archives. To see more from the Wolfson Archives collections, visit our website, wolfsonarchives.org. You can search the archives catalog and watch video online. And be sure to connect to our YouTube channel where you will find hundreds of carefully curated clips or link to the Wolfson Archives Facebook page to keep up with our busy calendar of historical happenings. Until next time, I'm Rene Ramos. Thanks for watching. Oh, wow.